Police have identified the YouTube shooter. This was the woman who opened fire at the YouTube campus in San Bruno, California. And other than the shooter herself, luckily no fatalities were reported. Three individuals were reported to have injuries and they are still being treated at the hospital. But here's what we know about the woman who opened fire. Her name is Nassim Najafi. Agdam, and she's from San Diego. She allegedly opened fire at the tech giant's main campus in San Bruno, wounding three people before turning the gun on herself. So that has officially been confirmed. The gunshot wound was a self inflicted wound. Apparently, she used a pistol in the shooting, and so far, there's no indication that she obtained it illegally. In fact, it has been confirmed that she purchased the gun legally. Or at least had the gun legally. Now, she visited a gun range hours before she showed up at YouTube's California campus. Another interesting component to the story was that her family had reported her missing. They were concerned about her, and then authorities had found her near the YouTube campus, essentially, in her car. And when the authorities had alerted her parents that she had been found and they let them know where her location was, they said that they were concerned because she was angry at YouTube and she was holding a grudge against YouTube over her videos being demonetized. Okay, so let's give you some more details on that. Now, Mountain View officers had found her sleeping in her car early Tuesday, hours before the shooting, and described that she did not pose a threat, which is why they didn't take her in custody, they let her go. Now, here is what the San Bruno police chief says. We have a pretty good idea, but we'd like to get some more information before we can definitely say exactly what that motive was. But obviously, she was upset with some of the practices or policies that the company had employed. Now, Good Morning America did a piece on this this morning, and it kind of gives you some more insight into that. But before we toss that video, Cenk, I wanted to give you a chance to chime in. Yeah, so sometimes they'll say things like as if they're surprising. It turns out her gun was legal. Yeah, of course, it's the easiest thing in the world to buy a legal gun. So I never find it interesting whether the gun is legal or illegal. Um, this, we're in a sea of guns, all you have to do is just pick one up. Uh, there's 250 million guns. By the time we do this video, there's probably 260 million guns in the country. And so, and then they say like, oh, she went to a gun range. Yeah, people go to gun ranges all the time. If you think that that's a significant issue, that all there's all these guns and people are shooting, uh, getting ready to shoot people, I agree with you, that's a massive issue. But if you wanna do something about it, the gun rights people will flip out and they'll say, oh, she had a, if they caught her, and by the way, the cops did talk to her, as Anna pointed out, before, beforehand. And the one thing that was alarming here was her own family saying, watch out. She might be dangerous, we're worried about what she might do, including to herself, right? But when you go to stop her, I got a legal gun. I'm going to a gun range, so what, what are you gonna do about it? I don't know that the cops knew that she had gone to the gun range at that point. But she could have just told them, it wouldn't have made any difference. She could just scream, I have second amendment rights. And then everybody would flank to defend her. And so just don't pretend to be outraged after the fact. So let's take a look at the video. No, it'll also give you a sense of what type of content she was putting up on YouTube. Take a look. Law enforcement officials say this is the woman, 38-year-old Nassim Agdam, who stormed into an employee patio at YouTube headquarters in San Bruno, California, shooting three employees before turning the gun on herself. It was one after another. Boom, 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 boom. Her family says the prolific YouTube user, my name is Nassime Saps, hated the company, claiming it was censoring her content and not paying her for the videos she posted on the platform. I'm being discriminated and filtered on YouTube. She had a YouTube channel which boasted ab workout videos, and many of them in Farsi. Her brother says her family reported her missing over the weekend and claims they told police about her deep-seated resentment towards YouTube. And she had a problem with uh, YouTube, so we called that cop again and told him that she might, there's a reason she went all the way from San Diego to that. 
So in one of her videos, she was quoted as saying, there is no free speech in real world and you will be suppressed for telling the truth that is not supported by the system. Videos of targeted users are filtered and merely relegated so that people can hardly see their video. So she was pretty clear about her frustration toward YouTube. A lot of content creators have felt frustration toward YouTube fairly recently because of videos getting demonetized. And a huge reason behind that has to do with the fact that advertisers started to get incredibly uncomfortable with some of the content that their advertisements were appearing on. So there were some specific cases that made news involving content creators who said things that were you know use the n word or use language that the advertisers didn't like and so they threatened to pull all their ads from YouTube in general and then YouTube wanted to appease them and essentially did change their policies using an algorithm that would demonetize certain videos that the advertisers didn't like. And this impacted everyone across the ideological spectrum. Doesn't matter if you're conservative, doesn't matter if you're progressive. Everyone, every channel experienced their content getting demonetized because of the algorithm. Think about the billions of hours worth of YouTube content that gets uploaded on a regular basis. They don't have the manpower to, to watch all that content, so they rely on that algorithm. And admittedly, that algorithm is a bit flawed. And so people have been frustrated. She seems to be one of those individuals. And they made a lot of progress in, in fixing that algorithm as well. So look, we got hit pretty hard by the demonetization as well. And uh, there is great irony that we were all punished, whether we're in politics or not in politics, or if we're good guys or bad guys, for the insane rantings of, generally speaking, right wing guys who said racist things and, and things filled with bigotry, etc. And after that, I was like, I don't want to have my product in front of those videos because it's going to turn off a lot of my customers, and I don't want to turn off my customers. So then we all got demonetized. And and then the right wing, of course, as always, cried the hardest, even though it hit us all and it was their fault, right? But nonetheless, they went and, and did all that and then they got people all riled up like this lady. But look, this woman, you think you would have been on air anywhere without YouTube? Do you think your ab videos and your dolphin videos were gonna make it on the ABC? So look, I'll, I'll admit my bias. I, I've been a fan of YouTube for a long, long time, and we were the first partner for YouTube. Um, but my bias is born out of reality, out of facts, because they allow for independent voices and independent voices that the establishment media shuts out. So to then complain that you're not giving me enough money, look, you can, there's legitimate ways to say, hey, how can we fix this together? Right. And then there's what she did, which is madness and insanity and terrorize people. And she claims to be, she was apparently an extreme vegan. I'll grant you that she was extreme. And, and she says that she was for, and here's a direct quote, for me, animal rights equals human rights. Well, how about the rights of the humans that you try to murder? Exactly, exactly. And you know, to to your point regarding YouTube and demonetization. So there are a lot of conversations about how YouTube is censoring people. So first off, advertisers not wanting to spend money on your videos because they're afraid of the content in your videos and afraid of it being too controversial is not the same as censorship. If YouTube was pulling your video down, literally not letting you post videos because of your ideas or your beliefs, then you have a case. Absolutely, that's censorship. But they're but not- But by the way, just let me be clear, yeah. it's not government censorship yeah. as, as we've discussed many times yeah, before. And exactly, it's not a constitutional violation, it is a private company, they're able to do what they want. They're not the government, okay? So so I thank you for clarifying that. But with that said, YouTube doesn't pull the videos down. It gets demonetized based on their algorithm, which again, needed improvement. You say that there's been some improvement, but I think that there's still more. I think YouTube can improve transparency, explain in, in better detail why the videos got demonetized. But look, my point is, what we need to address more than anything is, 
you know, the fear of these advertisers because they do get scared very easily. And I think what they need to open themselves up to is content other than the squeaky clean television stuff that they've been so comfortable with. Which is, by the way, not squeaky clean. Right. So, right. you know, last thing on that, if you're gonna get angry, first of all, please do it in a productive way, right? And and so obviously this is the most extreme example, but there's a lot of people who are getting angry in in unproductive ways. But and and have some sense as to who you're directing it at. And in terms of the advertisers, it's not it's not YouTube. It is clearly the advertisers. Anna's absolutely right about that. But even in terms of those, the productive way to handle it, I think, is wait a minute, guys. Let's talk about the hypocrisy here as you advertise on television, mm -hmm. on two different fronts. One in general. I mean, we did the story about The Bachelor the other day. I mean, that is yeah, that's a great point. Emotional pornography at its worst. You have a woman who's broken down and just crying and crying, and they will not take the camera off of her. It's just gross. But advertisers flock to it. They're like, well, that kind of gross, disgusting stuff on air is wonderful, right? And then you watch any of the shows, including like things like Two and a Half Men, that was you know number one for however many decades, right? They are constantly making jokes about prostitutes and sex. If you did that on YouTube, they're like, whoa, whoa, I don't know if that's safe, right? Right. But it's so there's. Gigantic hypocrisy along those lines. And, and let me be clear about, look, when Jake is saying that they would see it on YouTube and they'd be like, no, we don't know if that's safe. It's not that they're actually watching that content and making a decision based on that content. They, because so much content gets uploaded onto YouTube, again, they rely on an algorithm. So, you know, that demonetization gets triggered by certain tags and certain wording in the in the video. But it's not one person who's sitting there and thinking, Hmm, this is too conservative for me. Demonetized, it doesn't work that way. Or this is too progressive for me. Or this is too sex oriented for me. It just doesn't work that way. And by the way, I mean, look, it, yes, we've been hit and we will continue to get hit as we cover content that triggers, you know, the demonetization. And we have to have conversations about that on a regular basis. And guess what? We still do stories that we know will not be monetized because at least we have the ability to get the word out about those stories. And that's why I respect you. YouTube. It sucks. This demonetization thing sucks. But I would rather not get paid for that video and still have the ability to use my platform to draw attention to that story. So that's just my take. I, I understand if people disagree with it. And, and final note on that is, look, everyone has a bias. And what the mainstream media is doing now is taking advantage of situations like this, uh, whether it's Cambridge Analytica scandal at Facebook or it's the, you know, an ad appearing in front of some racist video on YouTube to say, nope, now the only news that is acceptable is CNN, Washington Post, etc. Now, do are they clean? They have no bias at all. They just drop down from heaven and earth uh, onto earth and, and uh, they only deliver you the truth. Look, I, I respect those guys. I tell you, like the, all the conspiracy theories about how they get together in a room and make up stories is preposterous, etc. But they do have a bias, and that is in favor of the status quo because they are run by multi billion dollar corporations and they don't want change. They're on top, of course, they don't want change. And that oozes into all of their content. So let's not pretend that they don't have a bias. They do. So if I was an advertiser, I would want to get. Sure, I mean, they, CNN has a bias, but I'd put my uh, product on there. Uh, and then I would also put it on a left uh, wing perspective and I'd put it on a right wing perspective. I get it if an advertiser doesn't want to offend huge swaths of, of their um, customers by calling them the N word or alienating 1.6 billion Muslims in the world because they'd like to sell Coke and Nike to them. I understand that, but at the same time, it, people that are on the left and the right are the majority of the country. So if you don't, if you're afraid to run your ad to people who have those positions, then you wind up running it to no one, which is kind of what's happening on television. All the young people have left, right. and they're still trying to force their ads into there because it's considered acceptable whether it actually is or not. What you just watched was one of the videos that we do today, but we actually do 
a whole two hour show every single day. It's a podcast, you could watch it in video or listen to it as audio. You can download it, you can stream it, and you get it completely ad free if you could become a member of the Young Turks. TYTnetwork.com slash join.